is a very important holiday, but it's not Halloween. Mark your calendars because October 30th is Talk Like Jane Austen Day. <laughs> to celebrate, use words like charming and wretched, talk with a British accent, and quote your favorite Jane Austen lines. However, if you want to excel at Talk Like Jane Austen Day, you need to be good at arguing. After all, Jane Austen's books are not just good love stories. They are textbooks on the art of argument. The first textbook on argument was Aristotle's On Rhetoric, written over 2,300 years ago. The Greeks and the Romans absolutely loved rhetoric. Everyone from Aristotle to Cicero to Quintilian wrote about it. And the same classical principles that they described can all be found in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. In Pride and Prejudice, both Mr. Collins and Mr. Darcy proposed to Elizabeth using the arrangement of a classical oration, which you can see here. It's a lot more impressive in Latin. <laughs> Let's look at the four reasons Mr. Collins gives for why he wants to marry Elizabeth. Number one, clergy should marry. Two, it will add greatly to his happiness. Three, his employer, Lady Catherine de Bourgh, wants him to marry. And four, he's inheriting Elizabeth's home. Unfortunately, Collins did not read Aristotle, or he would have known that proof should be formed on the basis of common beliefs, or what we would call common ground. None of the reasons he gives are ones Elizabeth shares. She turns him down. Oh, Mr. Darcy's first proposal doesn't go much better. He tells her he likes her against his will, his reason, and his character. Then... <laughs> Then he insults her family. Pro tip, never insult your future in-laws. <laughs> Elizabeth turns him down, but says her real reasons for doing so is that he split up Jane, her sister Jane, and Mr. Bingley, and that he has mistreated her friend, Mr. Wickham. After they awkwardly part, Darcy writes Elizabeth a letter, which is his counter-argument, or in classical terms, his refutatio. Pro tip, if you write a letter, he can't, she can't yell at you. In this letter, he uses two rhetorical moves. First, a decaloia. Basically, that means he um, admits that he is guilty as charged, but justifies his actions as necessary. Basically, Darcy did split up Jane and Bingley, and now has to paint himself in a positive light. Next, Darcy uses an apodeoxis, which is a chasing away of concerns. He, tells, he rejects Elizabeth's claims about Mr. Wickham and tells the whole true story. Pro tip, use juicy details. <laughs> After writing his letter, Darcy needs to work to establish his ethos or his credibility. Aristotle wrote that in order to have ethos, you have to possess arete or virtue. The great Roman teacher Quintilian wrote that rhetoric is the art of the good citizen speaking well. This goodness or arete can be summed up by the phrase, you can't just talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. Mr. Darcy walked the walk by getting Jane and Bingley back together, and then by saving the honor of Elizabeth's youngest sister. When she thanks him, he says, I thought only of you. What a heartthrob. <laughs> Elizabeth then accepts his second proposal, and that's the power of argument, something Jane Austen writes about throughout Pride and Prejudice. Aristotle wrote that rhetoric is the use of any available means of persuasion. And I suspect that most of the women here tonight would choose Mr. Darcy solely on his looks. <laughs> and I'm sure that Aristotle would agree that attractiveness is an available means of persuasion. Now, I am personally willing to go to London just to see the new 12-foot-tall Mr. Darcy in a wet shirt statue. <laughs> but Elizabeth doesn't choose Darcy for his looks or for his wealth. She judges him on his arguments and we judge people on their arguments every day. That is why understanding argument is so, in, so essential and why reading Jane Austen is so incredibly useful. With a little practice, you too can talk like Jane Austen. Now, I'd like to close with a little warning to all the gentlemen here tonight. This year marks the 200th anniversary of Pride and Prejudice, so lock up your daughters, lock up your girlfriends, lock up your wives. Mr. Darcy is in town.